Do you want to know the secret of heaven? Especially the secret that was given to three shepherd children in Fatima 104 years ago. Stick around to find out. Hello and welcome to America Needs Fatima. I'm Nick Bradigam and be sure to click subscribe and to also click the notification bell to never miss out on another story of Mary. Now, speaking of Mary, we're in the month of Mary. It's also Mother's Day is right around the corner too. And I know you're all out there getting supplies for you know, Mother's Day, whether it's your children, your mom, or your grandchildren, or great-grandchildren. But, honestly, what are you doing to honor your Heavenly Mother during this month of May? I got a suggestion. Maybe send a bouquet of roses to Fatima in honor of her. She would greatly appreciate that. But you will find the information detailing that below in the description box. So we're finally here. We're finally at this apparition at Fatima. And I have notes to make sure I don't miss a single thing because it is so crucial to get this point across. But first, like Mary's own story, it begins with an angel coming to her. So this time, it's an angel of Portugal in 1916 appearing three times to Lucia dos Santos and Francisco and Jacinta Marto, Lucia's cousins. And this angel expressed deeply the need to teach them how to pray and how to offer sacrifices. This is something that we all can do, right? We're a little bit afraid to offer sacrifices, but we can do them. In reparation and for the conversion of sinners. And that is so crucial. That is so crucial and at the heart of the message. He also taught this prayer. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love thee. I ask thee forgiveness for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love thee. This is a prayer that I would highly encourage you to say to yourself when there is ever a moment of doubt in your heart or a doubt in a family member's heart. Then what the angel does this third time is he holds a chalice and holds a host over the chalice and the host actually bleeds into the chalice. But that's not the miraculous part. It is, but honestly, what's more miraculous is that he then suspends them into midair. They're just suspended there as he goes and prays with them. Then after the prayer, he gives the chalice and the host to all three of the children. What an incredible moment that is. And this is such a, a moment that kind of brings to mind how central the Eucharist is in conversion and in making reparation. It is so crucial to all of us that we have a devotion to the Most Holy Eucharist. So the moment finally comes and Our Lady arrives on earth and she tells the children, I'm from heaven. This happened on May 13th, 1917 at the Cova de Area. And she asked the children to come back to the same spot, same spot, same location. Same time, on the 13th of every month, for six consecutive months. So until October. You won't want to talk about a faith, strong faith. That right there is what, is what faith can do. But then they're on the topic of heaven. And she says, Mary says that, yes, you will all go there. But Francisco has to pray many more rosaries in order to get there. 
And then they ask, well, is my friend, is our friend uh, in heaven? And she responds, yes. Then what about Amelia? Is she also there? And Mary actually says, she's in purgatory until the end of time. This has always struck me, this has always struck me as a bit alarming and concerning because what on earth did she do? What was her sin that put her into purgatory until the end of time? And how do we stop that from happening to us? And then Mary says, pray the rosary daily to obtain peace in the world and the end of the war. Truer words never spoken, right? If we want peace in the world, pray the rosary. There was a war back then, it was called World War I. We have to pray the rosary to end the wars going on in our world right now. Now we come to the second apparition in June, to which Lucia asked Our Lady, when are you going to take us to heaven? When? When is this going to happen? And Our Lady responds that she will take Francisco and Jacinta soon, but Lucia will have to stay on earth longer in order to spread the devotion to Mary's Immaculate Heart. Now we come to the third apparition. And at this apparition, basically rocked the children to their very core, in that the first secret was a vision of hell. So Our Lady opened up the earth to have them see and witness the sea of fire and these souls being devoured by beasts and being tortured. Though it's, it scares me. Uh, honestly, if that image of hell that they saw, and if you could see their faces, they're just so shaken up by what that was and what the other part of the secret was. You know, this is... This is hugely important because this is when Mary says, you see this place? This is where poor sinners go. So in other words, confess your sins. Very, very easy to do. And if you feel that you cannot confess your sins, talk to your priest. Honestly, talk to them. There is no sin that they have not heard. Though you might be blushing, or crying or sobbing because of the sin, do not fear the confessional. Do not fear God's grace and mercy. Because that confessional, and you will have to make reparation for those sins, but that confessional is the beginning of your healing. Then we come to the second part of the secret, which is actually a, a warning of chastisement and how to avoid it. The chastisement was going to be bad. And it deals with the consecration of Russia to the Immaculate Heart and the communion of reparation on the first Saturdays. Or Russia will continue to spread her errors throughout the world and it will cause great wars and persecutions of all of us, really. Well, guess what was allowed to happen? Guess what we did not do? We didn't, we didn't do the consecration. So Russia was allowed to spread her errors. Version 3. So the second part of the secret was a warning of chastisement and of how to avoid this chastisement, which all deals around Russia. The consecration of Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the communion of reparation on the first Saturdays 
all devoted to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. If this did not happen, Russia would spread her errors. She would spread her errors throughout the world, causing great wars and persecution. Now we come to the fourth apparition, and stick with me because this kind of this gets confusing to to people uh, many times. The children were in jail by the mayor of Orem, who was a bad man. Doesn't matter how many depictions that you've seen of the mayor on film, he is not played ruthless enough. He wanted to boil them alive. He wanted them destroyed. So meanwhile, at the Kova, where Mary came that same day, on the 13th, the people in the Kova experienced the same thing that they would have experienced had the children been there. But Mary did not come until a few days later on their uncle's property on the 19th. And again, Mary asks for pleading with them to, have, to pray and to offer sacrifices to God. Now we come to the fifth apparition in September. And Our Lady says how very pleased God is with their prayers and sacrifices. Remember, God is offended by much of what is occurring in the world right, right then and now. So prayers and sacrifices are very pleasing to him. But he said that he doesn't want the children to wear the penitential robes anymore. You don't need to do that. Then, of course, because there's many people around them that need, you know, something cured about them. Mary says some will be cured, but there will be a miracle for all to believe. Now we come to the sixth apparition, October 13th, 1917. Feast. We're in the month of the rosary, right? So, Our Lady says, I am... I am Our Lady of the Rosary. It's like, finally, we know who you are. And then what she says is that she would like a chapel to be built on this spot in honor of her. So they do that. Then she tells them, you know, continue to pray the rosary daily because God is already too much offended and praying the rosary and making reparation for those sins committed are what is going to help her Immaculate Heart to triumph. Then and only then will that happen. Then the other part of this apparition was the miracle of the sun. And it had been raining, but so everyone's clothes were, were drenched with rain, but the sun began to spin and move across the sky in a zigzag formation. And Ten minutes go by. Everyone's clothes are dry. Hair. It'd be as if it, it, if it hadn't rained. But what the children saw was even more miraculous. What the children saw is, in the sun, three images. Three divine images. It was to match the three mysteries of the rosary. The Holy Family. Our Lady of Sorrows, with Christ carrying the cross up the Calvary, and Our Lady crowned Queen of Heaven and Earth as Our Lady of Mount Carmel with the child Jesus. And each time Jesus ends up blessing the crowd. And what a beautiful moment that, that was. But 70,000 people saw the sun dance across the sky so that they would believe. This May, to celebrate Mary's 104th anniversary of that first apparition in Fatima, why not send multicolored roses and your intentions to Fatima in honor of Our Lady? You will find the details listed below. And have you ever wondered what the Fatima children did after 
the apparition? Find out next episode. May God bless you, and may Mary Immaculate keep you under her mantle. Our Lady of Fatima, pray for us.